macro photography is very interesting genre. It can be done in outdoors, indoors, during times that outside is raining and you do want to do something fun with photography. You can do indoor macro photography. You have lots of household items that can be photographed. It's a really interesting thing. In this video I'm going to talk about Mzuiko 60mm f2.8 macro lens. Check out this video and see how the 60mm f2.8 macro lens works. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about the Olympus M Suiko 60mm f2.8 macro lens, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. And remember, my channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and of course about Olympus gear. And I usually post two videos a week, Tuesdays and on Fridays. But let's talk about this lens. Olympus has two macro lenses in its lineup. Okay, this 60mm f2.8 and then there is the 30mm f3.5. The 30mm is a bit less expensive than the 60mm lens and it's also a very capable lens. And I made a video about that in December 2018. And there will be a clickable end screen so that you can watch that video if you, if you are interested in that lens. But let's get back to this lens. The focal length of this lens is 60mm, which is quite good. I like macro lenses to be a bit longer, because then you have the possibility to have the lens a bit further away from the subject, so that you can fit some light between the subject and the lens, and the lens does not cast a shadow on the subject itself. What is the difference between macro photography and close-up photography? Well, photography is called macro photography when the subject is as big on the center as it is in real life. So it's one to one. But everything else that is taken very close is called close up. But I don't think it really matters if you're taking macros or close ups. This lens is good for both. Have you ever done close up or macro photography? And what kind of gear do you use for your macro shots? Olympus says on the website of the lens that it's good for portraits, nature, travel, and macro. And yes, I can agree with the portrait type. The 60 millimeter focal length is really good for portraits because it's a short telephoto lens and it's fairly fast. 2.8 is fairly fast and it can be used as a portrait lens. I agree on that one. But then nature and travel, not so sure about that because 60 millimeter for, as a travel lens, uh, it's not the most used focal length in travel in my opinion. But of course, any lens can be used for any photography. It just depends on your style. And then there is the use for macro, which of course this lens is primarily meant to be used for. The lens feels a bit cheap. That's because it's made out of plastic and it feels a little plasticky. Well, it's made of plastic, so it feels plasticky, of course. <laughs> it is very well made because this lens is dustproof, freezeproof and splashproof. So it's full covered for bad weather. And if you have a weather sealed body with this lens, no matter what the weather is, you all set to make some macro. And that's a, that's a very good. And then the other specs are length is 82 millimeters, diameter 56 millimeters, weight 185 grams, and filter thread is 46 millimeters. The angle of view of this lens is 20 degrees. And the closest focusing distance is 0 0.19 meters. The lens does not come with the lens hood, and I think that's a bad thing, very bad, because lens hoods are actually really, really useful. There are two things that lens hoods are really good for. They protect the lens if you accidentally hit something with the lens. It protects the front element, and it also blocks unwanted direct light to your lens. And it's the same thing when the sun is shining straight to your windshield when it's really dirty. You can't see a thing out. And the same thing happens if you have a dirty lens and you have some sun shining straight to the lens. It will be the same effect. And now it's time to look at some images that I took with this lens. Those images were taken four years ago and I used the EM1, the first version of EM1 camera. I really don't use this lens that much, but this is one of those lenses that professional photographers just need. 
you might have some assignment from a client which includes some macro close-up photography and then to have the equipment to do the job is essential. And what about the image quality? Like always, usually lenses are better if you stop down them a bit. So this one is quite good at f4. And usually if you do macro photography, you might want to have some depth of field. So stopping down is not a bad idea. And remember, in macro photography, you can also use focus bracketing and focus stacking on some Olympus cameras. And this lens is also a very good choice if you have or are planning to get the STF8 macro twin light from Olympus, which is made for macro photography. It fits perfectly in front of the 60 millimeter lens with the adapter. And then the lens has a switch on the side where you can choose the focusing range. And this is very good so that the lens doesn't have to go through the whole focusing range. If you know that your subject is between 20 centimeters and 40 centimeters, you can choose this option. And then if you want to have it at the closest focusing distance, then you just use the one by one. And then of course it has from uh, 40 centimeters all the way to the infinity and 19 centimeters all the way to infinity. And remember in some Olympus OMD cameras, you can select the focusing range from the menu system also. But this is very handy when you can select it straight from the lens. And if you want to have the lens to be focused at 19 centimeters, then it's a very good thing to have a focusing rail, which I actually have one, but just cannot find mine right now. I don't know, maybe I borrowed it somewhere or misplaced it somewhere, but it's a rail where there are two knobs that you can move the camera instead of focusing the lens. And it can do a very precise job if you want to focus exactly the closest focusing distance that you can get with the 60 millimeter f2.8 macro lens. And the lens has also a small screen where you can see the focusing distance and the close-up ratio. This lens costs about 500 euros slash dollars at the time when this video was made. For 500 is quite a lot of money, but also you get pretty good lens with that money. And if you feel that it's too much, you can get the 30 millimeter at 3.8 for 300 euros. And then there is a very good and very good budget option especially good if you're just starting to do macro and don't want to invest 500 euros on a macro lens, you can get some extension tubes, which is actually a empty ring that you put between the lens and the body, and it will make the lens that you already have focus closer than it does without the extension tubes. I have the Kenko extension tubes because Olympus doesn't have extension tube in its lineup. And remember, if you use the 30 millimeter f3.5, or the extension tubes with any other lens, your system is not weatherproof because the extension tubes are not weatherproof. So if you need weatherproof macro lens, then the 60 millimeter f2.8 macro lens is your only choice. But it's not a bad choice. I think it's a very, very capable lens. And here is something for you to watch next. There is a video series about macro gear and then there is the video about focus bracketing and focus stacking. But hey, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.